Exodus, the third chapter. Exodus 3, starting in verse 2. Exodus 3, starting in verse 2. It says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burned? Or we would, you know, that, that's, that's, that's using Ebonics. Why the, why, the, why the bush is not burnt? <laughs> and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. Verse again, verse number four for uh, through, for reiteration, and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, here am I. I want to speak today from the subject, come closer. Come closer. I have discovered in my journey with God now for, wow, for 48 years, it's a long time since I got saved at the age of 12, and I've, dis I've discovered, and all the more in my adult years as I walk with God, and as God got more deliberate and intentional about hearing God and fulfilling God's assignment for my life, I've discovered that God is not a yelling and screaming God. Okay? He's not going to be yelling to get your attention. Shaquita! Hakeem! Robert! That's not how God talks. When we study the scripture, we see repeatedly God speaks in a still, small voice. And God is not going to be yelling to get your attention. Now, I know people come up with all kinds of religious stuff, about the reason why the car flipped over three times because God trying to tell you something. Come on, really? Is that, is that necessary for God to tell you something? Well, the reason why lightning struck because God trying to tell you something. The reason why the car went into a spin and went in the ditch is because God trying to tell you something. No, the car probably went into a spin and in the ditch because you had ball tires, you were hydroplaning and going too fast. That's not how God wants to get our attention. That's not how God speaks. First of all, the Bible tells us that the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, illuminating all the inward parts. And when God wants to deal with us and really speak to us, he wants to talk spirit to spirit. Romans 8, 14 says, it means they're led by the spirit of God. They are the sons of God. So it's not in cars flipping and spinning and lightning flashing and, and, and all the things that we try to limit God to because we don't really want to get as close as we need to get to hear from him. And so it's not by God, by, by you, you know, if Lord, if this is, if, if, if I'm supposed to get married again, then, then let my first boyfriend from high school, uh, the one who I wouldn't let take me to the prom, let him reach out to me 40 years later on Facebook. No, God wants us to come close enough to hear him. He's not yelling. He's not into all this drama. He wants to lead us by our spirit. And God is waiting for us to turn aside. Somebody say turn aside. So the text, the foundation scripture here, I've uh, given you is Exodus 3, 2 through 4, that, um, that Moses has fleed from Egypt because he had killed an Egyptian. So much revelation in him killing the Egyptian. He killed the Egyptian because he saw an Egyptian beating, abusing an Israelite. And so he got the man off of him and killed him and buried him in the sand. And Moses thought nobody knew until Another occasion, he sees men fighting, and the man says to him, he said, what, you going to kill me and burn me in the sand, sand like you did the other one? And Moses was like, oh, I didn't know nobody saw that. 
One of the things we need to understand from that is that the reason why Moses even had a desire to do that is because he had a heart towards God's people. Part of his assignment was to deliver Israelites. But if we don't wait on the Lord, we'll do things the wrong way in the wrong time. See, he flees. It's believed now it's about 40 years later when he's old. 40 years later, he's about 80. And God first shows him this burning bush. He has resolved that he's to be nobody great in life. Whatever he was going to do, he can't do it anymore. He's no longer in the lineage of the Egyptians to in the succession plan of Egypt. And so he's resolved he's married this Midianite woman and he's keeping his father's law's sheep on the backside of the desert. And he sees off in the distance a bush burning, which apparently was not unusual in itself. And now, but he sees the same bush burning and it's not spreading, it's the same, and it, I don't know how long he was out there, but by now, whatever was burning should have burnt. So he says, I'm going to turn aside and see this site, why this bush is not being consumed. And when he turned aside, God called him out of the midst of the bush. Follow me. When he got closer, God spoke. God didn't call from him from the bush. Moses, come over here. God didn't do that. When he, by an act of his will, made the decision to pursue and go closer, God spoke. And many of us, we're not hearing from God simply because we're not getting close enough. Something I've discovered, God is a speaking God. God is always talking. I've often mentioned right now, some of y'all, some of y'all too old, not too old, too young. No, I'm talking, we used to have a thing called transistor radios. Okay, come on, slip your hand up. You know what a transistor radio was. Um, and then the rest of y'all who are lying want people to think you're younger than you are. Slip your hand up too. <laughs> they had a transistor radio. It could be a little radio, maybe a little box. Okay. Okay. Let me try that. How many of y'all remember a boom box? Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Same thing. That's bigger. <laughs> That's a bigger transistor radio. That's all. But start a little trend, and you have a little battery in it, usually uh, what, one of those eight batteries or whatever, and, uh, uh, and, and, and you would carry it around with you, and you could just, just, it was a radio, you could carry it around with you. And as long as it's off, you hear nothing. But when you turn it on and turn the dial, you could get whatever stations are in region. And it's not that right now the big DM is in the room. Y'all know, Lord, I found out the other night, y'all, they got a quiet storm on Big D. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> quiet storm, come on at night. I said, oh, sucky, sucky now. <laughs> Went to go get my girlfriend. I said, yes, sir. <laughs> Give this world of mine. <laughs> Lay at your, f I'm sorry, y'all. Let me get back to the word. See, y'all got me you know, being carnal. Big DM, 89.7, whatever radio stations, XM or whatever, it's in the room. If you had something to dial into the frequency, God is always talking. If we just dial into the frequency, he's always talking. He'll, he'll talk to you about your marriage. He'll talk to you about your children. He'll talk to you about your finances. How many of us have discovered that God will talk to you about your health? That God will tell you not to eat this. That God will tell you uh, to, to eat this or not eat this. God will speak to you about your health. Pastor Moss is in this program called Eat 2 M. Okay? I call it Eat 2 More. <laughs> I think that's funny myself. Okay? But God will tell you, no, not to, don't, don't eat that. 
God talks to us about things that matter. God talks to us about, he'll talk to you about things that concern your life. He, he's concerned about what concerns you, but we got to draw closer. We got to come closer to here. When he turned aside, God spoke. God didn't yell. God didn't scream. God didn't say, come over here. When he, by an act of his will, decided to pursue, God spoke. Gave him more details. Likewise, we see in the scripture that Elijah found out that a lot of times in all the noise, the noise and the drama doesn't mean it's God. 1 Kings 19, 11, and 12, and he said, go forth. Go forth, stand upon the mount before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains, breaking pieces of rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. All this wind, and God's not in it. <laughs> Y'all ever hear preach a whole bunch of wind, and God's not, anyway. But the Lord... <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, that's going to that's be in my new statements. God ain't in the wind. God ain't in that wind. Anyway, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire. So we see wind, we see fire, we, uh, we, wind, we see fire, we see an earthquake. God wasn't in any of it, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, there was what? A still, small voice. Y'all ever talk to somebody who don't project their voices very much? I, for some reason, every time I was even thinking about this this morning, I'm trying to remember who this is. There's somebody who I talk to regularly, I, I, or I've talked to several times, and, and it's like you got to have everything off. Because they're like, you're like, what? Huh, what? What, what? what you saying? You got to really tune in because they don't project their voices very much. You got to cut all the stuff off. Can't have anybody disturbing you. And many times God's saying, no, I'm not yelling. Turn everything else off. Get alone. Give me some undivided time. Let me know I'm a priority to you and you'll hear my will for your life and you'll get plans and strategies. We were, we were going someplace recently and I was in driving Pastor Marcia's car, which I drove, we drove to church today and she asked me a question, tell me, why are you, why are you driving my car? I didn't say nothing at first, but on the way, halfway here, I said, you know I do make this payment <laughs> and I pay the insurance. I just want you to know while I'm driving your car. Anyway, so, and so, uh, it, it, because that's probably her car, and I, I'm not as familiar with, and so we had, the, we had the GPS system on, and also had the radio on, and, and if the GPS volume is set right, you know, when they go to direct you, the, the, the volume of the radio comes down, the G GPS voice, I said, what's wrong with your car? She said, the body, I said, well, turn it up. I can't. The woman said, turn right. I said, what? <laughs> turn right at the next. I'm going to turn the volume up. Then I had to turn the radio down so I could hear the GPS system. Sometimes it's not that God's not talking. You got too much other stuff in your ears. Got too many other people you're listening to. You can't get his counsel because you're too busy walking in the counsel of the ungodly. Sometimes you can't even get God's counsel because you're so busy listening to what your family does and what your family said, which is not according to the word of God. Walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. I'm, I know you're going to get mad, and that could be your mama. Don't, don't, now, don't be called my mama ungodly. You know what she's saying ain't based on the word. Your mama been married three, four times and, and each one left her. And she's going to try to tell you how to be a wife. Somebody said, no, he ain't talking about my mom. No, he ain't doing that. I, no, he, he, he. Yeah. Obviously, she can't get you counsel. 
your girlfriend who ain't never been married to him, girl, I wouldn't be taking that. That's why she don't have no man. And she would take a little something. <laughs> if she take a little something, rather want to fight about everything, maybe she would have a man. Sometimes you got to be careful who you're listening to. And sometimes we just got too many voices in our ear. And we're listening to, we're paying attention to the earthquake and the fire and the wind. And God's trying to say, if you would turn everything off, off, if you come closer, you'll hear my voice. The message translation of that verse from 1 Kings 19 and 12, it says, after the fire, a gentle and quiet whisper. And when people are whispering, you got to listen closely. And when we come closer to seek God, he speaks more specifically and more detailedly. But you got to come closer. All us think we're going to get direction on the fly. We're going to get wisdom incidentally. That's not how this relationship works. We see the situation with Samuel. Samuel's a child. First Samuel, third chapter. Samuel's a child. His mother has told God, if you give me a child, I'm going to give him back to you, which means she brings him to the temple. Now he's being raised by the priests. Eli, that was the Bible. That ain't today. If you say the Lord told you to have a child to bring it to this priest, I'm going to call DSS on you, and your child going to be in the system. I done raised my children. You can't bring them to me. But they brought Samuel, and, and he was being raised by the priest Eli. And the Bible says in the first Samuel third chapter around the first verse around there says, and Samuel ministered unto the Lord, but he didn't know the Lord. He ministered before the Lord, but he didn't know the Lord. Let me say it again. He ministered before the Lord, but he didn't know the Lord. Let me make it plain. He sung on the choir, but he didn't know the Lord. He worked in the parking lot, but he didn't know the Lord. He was on praise team, but he didn't know the Lord. He played an instrument at the church, but he didn't know the Lord. Do not think that knowing church and knowing the Lord is the same. So many people think, no, I mean, you can know. I'm going to go deep here. I, I didn't always believe this, but I believe it now. I believe you can hear tongues enough to repeat them. Because I'm discovering folk got tongues today but they don't have nothing that keeps them. Now the Holy Ghost that they told me I needed was the Holy Ghost who will keep you. The Holy Ghost that they told me that I needed to receive was the one that make you do right when you want to do wrong. But now all we got today is tongues. And I believe there's folks who can repeat tongues. I remember you. Years ago, I was a teenager. I heard somebody speaking in tongues. And every time he spoke, he'd go, Roba Sata Cristo. I said, I'm going to work that into my tongues. Baba <laughs> Cristo. Cristo. I said, I was a teenager, y'all. <laughs> to this day, I know Bishop Bailey's tongue. Ito Toro Mahata. I grew up hearing that as a little boy. He going to tell he kobo. He to this day he say he kobo. <laughs> Food good he say he kobo. <laughs> he kobo. So you got a lot of people, y'all. We know church and don't know the voice of God. We know perceiving how to raise our hand. We know how to dance. Told y'all, y'all, I had, had to work in my dance. I said, I said, do this thing. I said, do this when I was looking. <laughs> then I started going around the, around to the other services. I said, do like this. And realized my dance wasn't good enough for them. And I looked at other folks. They was, they was doing all this. So I would play my music at home. And then I said, I got to work on that. What I realized now, that was just a river dance. (laughs) 
We can know church. Listen to me, y'all. I know we're laughing. We can know tongues. We can know dancing. But you don't know God until you know his voice. Not church. His voice. Not procedure. His voice. Not how we do it in the Pentecostal church. Not how we do it in the Baptist church. Not how we do it in Church of God in Christ. Not how we do it in Catholicism. But until you know God. And you know God by knowing his voice. Samuel ministered before the Lord, but he didn't know the Lord. 1 Samuel 3 verse 4, and the Lord called Samuel. Who called Samuel? And the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel answered, here am I. Verse 5, and he ran unto Eli and said, here am I. For thou calleth me. And he said, I didn't call you. Lie down, boy, go to sleep. He interrupted my sleep. And he went and lay down. Verse 6. And the Lord called again, second time. Samuel. And Samuel rose, went to Eli, and said, Here am I, for you did call me. And he answered, I didn't call you. My son, lie down again. Second time. Verse 7 says, Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. He knew the preacher's voice. He knew his pastor's voice. But he didn't know the voice of the Lord. Can I tell you, I appreciate y'all honoring me and respecting you, me as your bishop, as your man of God, as your pastor, as your spiritual father, or whatever you, however you embrace me. I appreciate that. I appreciate you allowing my words to be weighty in your life. I appreciate the fact that many of you will get counsel from me and ask my opinion about things or, or want me to give you some guidance. But can I tell you, you can't know my voice and appreciate my voice more than you know and appreciate the voice of God. Because my voice should further direct you to his voice. My voice should help you more know his voice. So he knew the voice of Samuel, his pastor, his mentor, his spiritual father. But verse 7 said he didn't yet know the Lord. Neither was the word of the Lord revealed unto him. Notice in the same verse we see know the Lord and the word of the Lord. You know, the, you know the Lord by knowing the word of the Lord. And this word, I'm not talking about the logos. I'm not talking about the written word of God. I'm talking about the rhema word of God. It's the word that you hear behind the word. So when your ears are really tuned in, you're listening to me preach, and I'm preaching logos, so I'll give you an example about God delivering your finances and your issue may not be finances. But when I gave that point, the Lord showed you how this applied to your marriage. You start hearing the word behind the word. That's the rhema. And you don't really know God until you know the word behind the word and you know his voice. Samuel didn't know, yet know the Lord and he didn't know the word of the Lord had yet not been revealed to him. That means he didn't know God's voice. So the third time, verse 8, and the Lord called unto him again the third time. And he arose, went to Eli and said, here am I for you did call me. And Eli perceived. Eli's the prophet. Eli's the one who God had been talking to, had talked to up until now. But the Bible says that his eyes were dim, which is symbolic not just of his physical sight. It meant he stopped seeing God and he stopped hearing God. And so it occurs to him the third time he calls, he perceived that the Lord was calling the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, go lie down and it shall be if he call thee that you shall say, speak Lord. Speak to me. Speak loud. Speak to me. That's where that came from. That's scripture right there. He said, next time you hear God, let him know I'm willing to draw closer. Next time you hear God call you, come closer. Don't run to me. <laughs> run to him. 
Don't get up and go to the preacher. Press in the God. Oh, that's a word for somebody. To, some of y'all, you've been too disappointed by a preacher. And God said, because you had your eyes more on them than you had on me. And we ought to be examples. I'm not letting preachers, I'm talking about pastors especially, I'm not letting us off the hook. We ought to be examples. The Bible says in James, the third chapter, desire not to be many teachers or masters instructing others. For those of us who teach others, we will receive the higher condemnation. We're going to have a higher judgment. So for people to say, as soon as you get in trouble and caught, and caught with the side chick, talking about, well, you know, I'm just a man just like you. Well, sit down. Because I'm sitting down. No, we ought to be examples. Paul tells Timothy, be an example of believers. Paul tells Timothy, Timothy, follow me as I follow Christ. The thing that you have seen and heard and learned of me, you do, and God's going to be with you. Paul tells, he says, I'm going to send with you that brother who has a good reputation. You know the proof of him because I don't want anybody to blame us or, or I don't want to give any room to the devil to accuse us. So I got to make sure the people who I put before you are honest and people of integrity. And yet, despite all that, you cannot just have your eyes on man. Because they will disappoint you. We will disappoint you. And so, just because a man failed, you still got to press in the God. Well, I used to go to church, but the preacher did such and such. I ain't never heard nobody say, I used to drive a car, but the transmission went down. I ain't driving no more cars. I ain't nobody say, you know, I used to, I used to go to mechanics, but that, that mechanic ripped me off and I will never go to another mechanic. They don't say that, do they? No, you go find yourself another mechanic. You get a reference. Do you know a good mechanic? Because <laughs> that, that one, he just took my money. You ask for a reference. Look, somebody say, ask him for a reference. Get, get a reference. You need to ask somebody. Now he tells him, press in the God. Ask God to speak to you. He says, tell the Lord, speak, Lord, for your servant here. And verse 11, and the Lord said to Samuel, behold, I'm going to do a new thing in Israel at which time, at, at which both the ears of everyone that heareth it shall tingle. The point I made earlier, when we draw closer, when we tune in, God will give him more details. God didn't say, Samuel, wake up. I want to tell you something, that I'm getting ready to do a new thing in Israel, and both ears of everyone that hears, it's going to tingle. And I said, no, 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 no. When, when, I get, when I got your full attention, I'll give you more details. When you come closer. Somebody say, come closer. So to know the Lord is to know his voice. To know the Lord is to know his voice. Say that with me again. To know the Lord is to know his voice. Say it again. Say it again. So you only really know God to the degree you know his voice. You only know God to the degree you know his voice. Now, some of y'all, this is sounding really, really deep. But for those of us who have a relationship with the Lord, where we expect him to hear, where we expect to hear him, and we talk to him, and we dialogue with him, this is not strange. But if you don't readily talk to God and leave time for him to talk to you, you think, well, they're just being deep. Those of us who, who fellowship with the Lord, that's part of our regular conversation. You say, you know, I was going to do such, such, and the Lord said to me such and such. I was going to go ahead, and the Lord said, now, don't go over there. Was, and people who don't, understand, who don't know God, they say, oh, Lord, you, they think God talks. And we don't even think about it because it's such a part of what we do. You know, the Lord said to me, the Lord spoke, and people, religious people, religious people, church people. And look, he be talking, the Lord be talking to him. Because they know church. But they don't know the Lord. To know the Lord and to know his voice are synonymous. John 10, 2 through 5. Jesus says, he that entered in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. And to him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name. This is talking about intimacy. You know him, and he knows you. 
That, that very hairs on your head are numbered. Every stub I got on my head is numbered. It just got to remind y'all I cut my hair voluntarily. Just want you to know. It don't matter, but I just want to let you know I, I got a full head of, head of hair. I just don't want a full head of gray hair. So I cut it all off. Just like. The hairs on your head are numbered. He said, he said uh, I called my sheep by name, and he leaded them out. And when he put it forth his own sheep, he go up before them, and the sheep, what? Follow him. Now, why do the sheep follow him? For they know his voice. Can I tell you, when you really know the voice of God, you can avoid a lot of traps. David said, Lord, lead me in a straight path because of my enemies. He said, God, I know there are people and the devil himself that wants to trip me up. He said, so lead me in a straight path. Guide my steps. Order my path so I won't fall into the traps of the enemy. Oh, my God. I'm telling you, you don't have to fall for the devil's okie doke. If you, once you learn to know the voice of God, you can out-strategize the devil. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. The secret things belong to the Lord, but it's given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. God wants to order your steps and direct your path and outmaneuver every trap of the devil. The Bible says that to a bird, the net is set in vain. Oh, my God. Let me say it again. To a bird, the net is set in vain. Why? Because the bird can fly right over the net. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. I can fly over every trap of the devil. But I got to draw closer so I know his voice. Remember the Syrian army was coming against Elisha or the children of Israel? And God would tell Elisha which way they were coming. And Elisha would tell the king, they're coming north from the north, so head on to the south. They're coming east, so head west. And the king got upset. He said, we got a spy among us. And they said, no, 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 no. It's that prophet down there. That prophet down there in Israel knows the voice of God. And God talks to him and lets him know what you're strategizing in your bedchamber. Can I tell you, God will let you see the devil afar off. That's something I learned, to, I learned to pray. I think I got that from Mother Bailey. God, I pray that I see the devil afar off. The Bible says, be sober, be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, goeth out, roameth around, seeking whom he may devour. It didn't say who he's going to devour, whom he may devour. Amen. That, that means some of us, we're going to hear the voice of God, and we're going to be led around the traps of the devil. And what he's success, successful in doing to others, he will not do to you. Because no weapon, no weapon, no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. Somebody say, I know his voice. I know his voice. I know his voice. To know the Lord is to know his voice. So verse 5 says, and the stranger, they're not going to follow. Because he will flee, but he will, will flee from them. For they know not the voice of strangers. John 10, 27 says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them, they follow me. I know them, they follow me. We have intimacy. They draw close enough. Can I tell you? I, 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 I had to I learn this. I had to learn this because, you know, sometime, one time I was hearing this stuff about, <laughs> I was hearing this stuff about as a pastor, you can't get too close to the people. You got to because people make you common. And to some degree, I understand that to some degree because some of y'all, everybody can't handle some. You know, some, some of y'all can't handle the transparency of me and Pastor Marshall. And transparency, when I say transparency, I'm just meaning not having a, a, a pulpit and a church, a pulpit and a church personality versus a real personality. <laughs> okay? I was talking to someone and they said, they said about, they said, man, he's always in character. You're talking about a pastor. 
Every time you see, God bless you, beloved. <laughs> Who talks like that? <laughs> hey, how you doing, Superman? God bless you. Good to see you, Doc. Who talks like that? What is that? When you're getting busy with your wife, you sit down, beloved. <laughs> Good to see you in our chambers tonight. <laughs> Might we copulate? <laughs> Give me a break. I'm sorry for y'all. Somebody said, what's that? Don't worry about it. Pure, all things are pure. <laughs> if you're single, don't worry about copulating. And so I was taught this stuff, you gotta be, you gotta be distant from people. And, and I'll never forget, one time, no, in the early days of my pastoring, I was hearing this teacher say, he said, you gotta protect your anointing. You gotta protect your anointing. So to protect your anointing, protect your anointing from the people. Sister Rosa Harry, did you hear? Sister Rosa Harry, her late husband, Brother Harriet, who was just, who was who he was, okay? A lot of our young people, young adults, they remember Brother Harry because Brother Harry would get on them and they would sit there and run, be quiet, stop all that. Is. But they, he, Brother Harry ran this church as a head to usher. Yes, he did. But Brother Harry came up to me one time. James Harry said, uh, Pastor, I can't hear you talking about protecting the anointing. He keep talking this stuff about, he said, can't the anointing protect itself? <laughs> he said, can't the can't they know to protect? I started thinking about that. I said, you got a point there, Brother Harry. The anointing can protect itself. But I was hearing this stuff about being, you know, uh, so had to be aloof from the people. But can I tell you this? Real shepherds smell like sheep. You can't pastor people and not like people. You can't like flocks and not like sheep. <laughs> flocks make sheep. And if you don't take care of the sheep, you'll never have a flock. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. You got to get close enough to the shepherd ah, to look like him, to sound like him, to smell like him. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John, Acts 4, they noticed that they had been with Jesus. Oh, come on now. If you get close enough, people will see you've been with Jesus. You act like Jesus. You talk like Jesus. You respond like Jesus. Can I tell you something? I said this this week. I've been meditating on this. We use the term Christian like a box check. Are you Muslim? Nah. You Hindu? Nah. Are you, uh, uh, who will leave out? Are you Muslim? Nah. So one box left, Christian, I'm a Christian. You're not, let me, let me, let me go deeper. I'm about to go deep here. You're not a Christian just because of what you believe. Yeah, let that sink in. I didn't say not Christian or what you believe. You're not a Christian just because of what you believe. Now you may be saved. Ooh, Jesus. Just because of what you believe. But you're a Christian because of how you behave. Look up the history of Christian. They saw them and they called them first Christians at Antioch. Christian means people who act like Jesus. You're not a, so yeah, I, you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but does, have you become a disciple? See, after you get saved, you got to become a disciple. Sound like the word discipline, right? When you become a Christian, now I discipline my life based upon the teachings and the example of Jesus. So after you get born again, after you get saved, you need to become a disciple. Let me go a little deeper. You need to become a Jesus representative. Now, the, the word that's used in politics and in government 
and by Paul is we are ambassadors of Christ. All ambassadors means that we are representatives of Jesus. When you cussing people out, are you a Christian? I didn't say what you believe. Right now I'm talking about how you behave. When you sleep with people you ain't mad, we're talking about they need to be more spiritual. Are you a Christian? Are you representing Jesus? That guy cut you off on the interstate. And by the way, y'all, let me just help y'all. So y'all won't be putting your finger up at me talking about I'm number one. No, I'm, I'm number one. Okay? It's legal and they want you to do it. They got something called the zipper merging. Okay? Now how zipper comes up? Okay, what you're supposed to do is legal, and they want you to do it. When there's three lanes merging into two lanes, they want you to fill all the lanes, and each of you come in like a zipper. Don't get mad at me because you don't know that. And you decide to leave two miles open on the left lane, and I decide I'm going to ride down the whole left lane and get in the zipper. Don't be putting your finger up me telling me you number one. I'm legal, and I'm doing what they want me to do. That's why the traffic backed up so long. Because y'all don't know how to merge. I'm sorry, y'all. This is just on my mind. Now that we're doing all this construction on 26. It used to take me 15 minutes to get home. Now it take me 30, 35. Because everybody don't know how to do the zipper. Anyway, I'm sorry, y'all. Let's get back to the message here. What was I talking about? Ambassadors. We're, we're supposed to be representatives of Jesus. So my challenge to you, do you represent Jesus? I know what you say you believe, but do you represent Jesus on your job? Do you represent Jesus in your family? Or do you blend in? I know this is challenging us. God did not save you to blend in. God saved you to stand out. You are the light of the world. A city set upon a hill that cannot be hid. You are the salt of the earth. We're not supposed to blend in. And the challenge for the church today is to be Christians who don't blend in. Especially for some of you younger people. Because I know when I was coming along, they preached a lot of legalism and a lot of bondage. Okay? And they scared the hell out of us, literally. Everything you did, you're going to roast and toast. <laughs> going to roast and toast. I, people you, you, you used to say stuff like this I'm going to forgive them because I don't want to go to hell well, you don't really want to forgive them do you I would cuss them out but I, but I, 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 know, I know somebody personally okay I know somebody personally their wife been cheating on them for years publicly everybody know about it but he said I ain't getting divorced because I don't want to go to hell that's bondage I don't want to go to hell. And they taught us divorce, God hates divorce, and if God hates and you do it, you're going to hell. We don't even think nowhere close to that now. I get it. But there was something about, something, that all that wasn't good, but it was something about teaching like that that gave us a fear of God. That I do need to be concerned about what God thinks about me. I do need to be concerned about my behavior. I do need to be concerned whether the words in my mouth and the meditation in my heart are acceptable in his sight. God said, I need y'all to come closer. Let, let me wrap this up. The closer we come, the more we'll hear, the more we recognize his voice. God wants us to turn aside, seek him, come closer. Seeking and coming closer is an act of your will. You decide whether you're going to be close. I heard somebody say this years ago. All of us have as much God as we want. All of us are as deep as we want to be. 
All of us are as spiritual as we want to be. Everybody knows if you don't have enough money, okay, and you got a job that ain't paying you enough, what's the solution? Get another job. You don't just say, well, you know, some people just ain't going to get the bills paid. You're like, no, Pastor, I need you to believe me, stand with me, so and see, I need God kind of job. Not to live, not to give. We, 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 we activate our faith. Okay? All of us, so if you want more, you do more. Say it again. If I want more, I got to do more. We won't get closer. We got to be deliberate. We want more God. We won't be more spirit. We got to be deliberate about it. Early will I seek thee. Psalm 63 and 1 and 2. Verse 2, I want to see your power and your glory. Just like I've seen in the sanctuary. I want to see you move in my life like I've seen you move in church. I want to experience you daily like we have services. Isaiah 26 and 9. With my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yea, with my spirit within me. I'm going to seek you early. That means I'm not going to wait for everything to get to extremes. Not wait for everything to fall apart. But I'm going to seek God early in my situation. Even Jesus realized that he had to intentionally and deliberately stay close to the Father. After he would pour out, he had to get filled up. Come on, we going through life, we got to get filled up. Some of us, it took all everything we had to believe God and keep our mind through this pandemic. Come on, it's time to fill up again. You've given out. You wrestled with that devil. You, 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 had to, you had to try to meditate on him to keep your mind in perfect peace. When every time you looked on, on television, they were showing you how many people died. And you heard about this one. And you heard about that one. But you had to press in. God, I'm going to keep my mind stayed on you so you can keep me in perfect peace. You've been pouring out. You've been in the fight. It's time for you to draw closer and get filled back up. Glory to God. Isaiah 55 and 6 says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Jesus realized, I got to, after he ministered, he said, I got, I got to draw closer. Let me end with this. Mark the first chapter, verse 32 through 35. It said he just got finished healing people. People standing around the door. People pressing to the city, trying to get to Jesus. But Mark 1, 32, it says, and at evening, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils and all the city were gathered together at the door and he healed many that were sick of divers diseases. He cast out many devils and he didn't allow the devils to speak because they knew him. Verse 35, and in the morning arising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place and there he prayed listen I know some of us we have some of us the worst thing in the world was to be isolated and quarantined because we are extroverts and we get our charge and our energy from being around other people but can I tell you there's some things you're only going to get from being in the presence of God I know you get a laugh from people and you're going to get energized to, in the natural from people but come on if your spirit is going to be renewed if your mind is going to be renewed if you're going to be strong in the Lord in the power of his might you have to steal away from everybody else and get along with him and say God I'm putting everybody else out I'm turning everybody else off I need a word from you I need to hear from the spirit of God Bible says that verse Mark 135 New Living Translation says before daybreak the next morning Jesus got up and went out into an isolated place to pray Gethsemane later on we found out was one of Jesus secret places where he would go and get alone with God Gethsemane was a place that Jesus would go to draw closer to the Father and from the story of Gethsemane we got our own song of the church hallelujah and the psalm said i come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice i hear falling on my ear the son of god discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that i'm his own come on somebody shout hallelujah you got to make up your mind I'm going to get closer and when you get closer the song says and the voice I hear 
falling on my ear. The Son of God just closed. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I'm his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. I know you're extrovert. I know you like being around people. Can't just can't stand being by my can't stand being by myself. Well, why should anybody else want to be with you? God saying, I need to draw closer. In this season, when folks don't know what to do, how many of you know you got to hear God? Within 24 hours, Pfizer says we got a booster. Everybody need a booster shot. Dr. Fauci, CDD said, hold up. You don't need no boosters. <laughs> Misinformation, dif disinformation, facts, and let's not forget the term we learned during the Trump administration, alternative facts. <laughs> facts and alternative facts. Some of y'all, y'all forgot that? So I knew you, you have your facts, but we have alternative facts. That's what the press secretary said. We need a relationship with the Lord. One of my pastors said someone called him, wanted to call him back, and said they want him, they had a dream, need him to interpret it. You need to know the voice of God. How many of y'all busy trying, trying to understand your own dreams? Too much pressure, too much responsibility. Listen, y'all, I don't know why I'm going here. Thank God for Clubhouse, and we on there every Tuesday night, 9 o'clock. You can listen to Clubhouse, and Pastor Marshall and now we doing some exhortation about marriage and family and finances. But you just can't try to get on Clubhouse at any given time to hear profit. Lord, we, we used to call them the outhouse prophets. Now we got the clubhouse prophets. Everybody a prophet. Herb, prophets from everywhere. Everybody a prophet and everybody an apostle. You got to know how to hear the voice of God for yourself. When the Lord told me to marry Pastor Marsha, nobody else saw that. I know what God said, because they went against the religion, the tradition. She wasn't a sanctified girl from the sanctified church who wore skirts. And I hadn't told her that part yet. Right after we, we were going together, we went to a, well, y'all would call it a fair here. Went to a carnival, we called it, in Jersey City. And when we were out of town, I would hold a hand. But we were in my city, where they know me. So we'd go around the carnival, and she kept trying to, I said, she said, what's wrong? She kept trying to hold my, I can't hold my hand. You got pants on. I don't want none of the saints to see me with this girl with pants on. That's bondage. But because she didn't fit the mold, and thank God she didn't. Because where God was taking me to get me out and her out, we'd probably still be in. God was trying to get me out of that bondage, and, but, and she was never in it. <laughs> she often said, but you tried, to put, you tried to put me in it. You tried, but she fought hard. To this day, Pastor Marcy, she's this person. She says, she was spanked. <laughs> he said, well, why? Why can't you do this? Because we ain't supposed to. She said, well, why? Because that's the rules. Well, why? I said, it just don't make sense to me. I said, it don't have to make sense. Because we were taught just submit. Submit to leadership. Just submit. And she's like, I can't submit if it don't make sense. Some of y'all won't submit even when it does make sense. 
But can I tell you, we have to learn. To, come on, stand with me. I want to pray for you. I hope this message challenges you to get closer. Our prayer should be draw me close. Closer than I ever been. So many things pulling at me. So much information, disinformation. God, I need to hear your voice. I need to know what you're saying. I need directions for my life, direction for my marriage, direction for my finances. People telling me, do this, do this, go here. But God, I need to get closer to you. I need to hear what you are saying to me. Beyond what the preacher says, beyond what the church says, beyond what tradition says. I need to hear your voice. Come on, before we pray, let this be your consecration to the Lord. Lift your hand to the Lord. Draw me close, closer than before, closer than I've ever been.
relationship when you want us to have a serious intimate relationship forgive us for remaining in the outer courts when you're calling us closer to the inner courts forgive us for giving everything and everybody else more time than we give you Forgiving Netflix more time than we give you. Forgiving Hulu more time than we give you. Forgiving the networks more time than we give you. Forgiving our family and even friends more time than we give you. Forgive us for being Martha when we should have been Mary at your feet. Which was the necessary thing. Which was the good part. To be at your feet, to be in your presence, because in your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Oh God. So we consecrate and reconsecrate ourselves. Not to check a box and just be Christians, but to get closer. That we can radiate with your presence like Moses did when he was in your presence on the mountain. They saw Moses had been with God. They saw Peter and John had been with Jesus. God let it reflect in our lives that we're close to you. We change priorities. We rearrange things. We all have the same time. Help us to do what we should do with it. To give you first place in our lives. Because you promised us that we would seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness. That you will add all the other things that we're trying to pursue. In Jesus' name. Come on, give God praise if you receive that. Hallelujah.